Good morning, friends, and welcome to online worship from Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Aurora, Illinois. Even though we are separated from one another, we are so glad that you could join us via our YouTube worship experiences. It's always great to get together in God's house, even if it has to be virtually. As a friend of mine always says to his congregation, and I will remind you, we are one Sunday closer to this all being over, and that's something that we can hold on to and hope. That's the theme of this Sunday, by the way. It is Gaudate Sunday, the third Sunday at Advent. We'll light a pink candle this Sunday, and it is the Sunday that kind of breaks the sadness of the Advent theme and moves on to the lesson from St. Paul where he says, rejoice in all things, and again I say rejoice. So we rejoice on this Sunday that we are one Sunday closer to being back together again. Until that, we have some other opportunities to get together via Zoom meetings. The first is our famous now Zoom coffee hour. It takes place at 11 o'clock in the morning. It'll in a few minutes or whenever you watch this thing. If you want to be a part of it, just satchelspalgmail.com. If you've been a part of it before, don't even worry. The second thing, we're gonna to get together for an Advent social this Wednesday evening at seven o'clock. It'll take the place of our Bible study that has been coming together at Wednesday at seven. This time, just for fun, just for fellowship, bring your favorite liquid libation and join us for that. We are also grateful that so many of you have been sending in pictures of your crushes. Since we can't get together for our usual crush walk, we will do that virtually as well, and that'll be a part of our Christmas Eve celebration. So please, if you haven't done so already, send a picture of your crush to the church office, office at OurSaviorsAurora.org, and we'll be sure to include that in the Christmas Eve worship experience. And thirdly or fourthly or fifthly or whatever Lee I'm at here, uh, we're also looking for readers to take part in our virtual Christmas Eve service. You'll have to come next Sunday between 9 and 11, but if you do that, it'd be great, and we would, uh, we'll send you a lesson in advance. You'll get all dressed up in your Christmas finery, and we'll read the lesson so that uh, we can have a, a kind of a Christmas Eve experience, even if it has to be online on Christmas Eve. Please sign up for that, office our savior, aurora.org. Finally, as you know, our financial needs continue. Please be faithful in your contributions. Our Savior's Lutheran Church, 410 Downer Place, 60506 in Aurora, Illinois. So, with those matters temporal out of the way, let's get on to matters spiritual as we quiet our hearts Feel our imaginations and listen for what the Word of God would say to us this day through first Mr. Myers Pollock.
praise you, O God, for this victory wreath that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, strengthen our hearts as we await the Lord's coming in glory. Enlighten us with your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. Lord of light, who sent John the Baptist to offer hope and face the world's scorn, open our ears to hear the cries from the margins, exposing our fears, inciting our visions, and calling us to a step of faith through Jesus Christ, who is to come. Amen.
gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. This was the testimony given by John when priests and Levites from Jerusalem came to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, Well, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I'm not. You a prophet? He answered, no. And then they said to him, well, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And he said, I'm the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now, they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Seasoned preachers should know better. Pastors who have been in the business for years and have large, tall, steeple churches in the center of town should know not to challenge members, especially young members of their congregation. So it came as a surprise when one of my favorite preachers, Dr. James D. Hall, whom you have heard me refer to often, one Sunday in Advent, inadvertently laid down a dare to a member of his church in Charlotte, North Carolina, when he said in a sermon that he'd never seen a John the Baptist Christmas card, and he doubted that he ever would. When he arrived back in his office after the 11 o'clock worship, this is what was waiting for him on his desk. Yes, the good pastor was holding in his hand the first ever John the Baptist Christmas card. Look at it again, and you will see that the person who drew it was really paying attention to the story. Not only is Repent Ye written in bold letters across the top, but the card has everything. John's hair is a mess. He is dressed in the obligatory leather belt, referred to as a girdle in this picture, camel's hair raiment, and for good measure, there's a plate of locust and wild honey at his feet. The picture is even clearly labeled as being in the wilderness of Judea. But there is one more thing. Look again. To the artist, those squiggly lines emanating from John's armpits signify that even though he may have spent a good deal of time in the River Jordan, what he really needed was a good, solid bath. This is the picture that Matthew, Mark, and Luke drew of John. All three cover fully the repentance angle of the story, and Matthew and Mark remember John getting very personal with the religious leaders who ventured forth into the wilderness to find out who or what was causing such a commotion among the people. They remember him saying something like in the Eugene Peterson paraphrase of scripture called the message, 
brood of snakes. What do you think you're doing slithering down here to the river? Do you think a little water on your snake skins is going to make any difference? It's your life that must change, not your skin. And don't think you can pull rank by claiming Abraham as father. Being a descendant of Abraham is neither here nor there. Descendants of Abraham are a dime a dozen. What counts is your life. Is it green and blossoming? Because if it's dead wood, it goes into the fire. With a message like that, it is very likely that Dr. Howell is in possession of the one and only John the Baptist Christmas card. The picture of John that we have before us this day in the gospel is mellower and more evasive. There's no fire and brimstone spewing forth this Sunday, no calls for repentance or wilderness travel. Still, the posse of the highly religious came out to see him with one question on their mind. Who do you think you are anyway? Well, he laughed. I'm not the Messiah, if that's what you're thinking. So, who are you then, they asked. Elijah? Nope. A prophet? Uh-uh. Well, who are you then? Give us some kind of answer. Okay, says John. You can tell your friends that I'm the one Isaiah was talking about. The voice crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. But why are you baptizing then, if you're not the Messiah or Elijah or the prophet? Look, fellas, John said, running out of patience. I baptize with water. That's it. That's all John had. Water and the Word. That's where we all started our journey in faith, with water and the Word. And then somebody did for us what John did for his people. When the people emerged from the waters of the Jordan, John didn't just pat them on the head and say, now you're all clean, be on your way, and try not to get so dirty the next time. He pointed to something and said, wait for it, wait for it. It's like the punchline of a joke that we can all see coming a mile away. It's like the moment in a movie when you know what's going to happen before it does, or maybe you know because you've seen the movie before, and you turn to your partner next to you and say, wait for it, wait for it. It doesn't take much, does it, to see those two confirmation students outside of Dr. Hall's office. He enters, takes off his robe, rummages around a bit on his desk, wait for it. Wait for it, one student says to the other. The card is found. The pastor doesn't just smile, but he laughs out loud and maybe just claps his hands together in joy and throws back his head. He calls for his staff to come quickly from their offices. Hey, gang, he yells, come quick, you've got to see this. And he passes the card around the room. It's the moment of joy that the artist has been waiting for. John's wait for it is what Advent is all about. This year, the waiting is going to be particularly difficult. The wise among us will wait on those large gatherings with family and friends. We'll have to wait for the traditional Norman Rockwell holiday to come this year. We'll have to wait to see the people we love who are separated from us by time and distance. We'll have to wait for it. 
And John the Baptist reminds us that we wait in hope. The Christian hope looks at the world around us and acknowledges that sometimes things can be very bleak. We don't pretend that the overwhelming loss of life our nation has faced this year, or the health of even more people, or the confidence or mobility or our ability to gather is something to be taken lightly. This year, it's very hard to bury our heads in Yuletide cheer. This year, our hope is more like the candles on the Advent wreath, which every week go a little bit brighter, a little bit brighter, and a little bit brighter every Sunday, straining against the darkness. We light our candles and wait. And the best news I can give you this day is the reminder that the one we are waiting for is already here. Christ has come. He's already with us. We're only celebrating the commemoration of his birth. He has never been away. Through all the turmoil of 2020, he has been here. Through every difficulty we have faced, he has been here. Through isolation and fear and from frustration, Christ has been, wait for it, wait for it, here with us. That's the news that John the Baptist announced, and it's a news that we know to be true. And so I think that that witness alone is enough to merit John the Baptist at least one mention on a card, Christmas, or Advent, or otherwise. Don't you think? Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of the prophets, we give thanks for the voices that cry out and demand our attention. 
They call us to put our trust and hope in you. Forgive us when we close our eyes to your vision and when we stop our ears to your promise. Heal our weaknesses when they give up on ourselves, on one another, and on you. Free us from hopeless living that we may joyfully love and serve others. In difficult times, you have been with us. Keep that comfort alive in people who are worried over friends and family who are in the hospital, struggling with unemployment or underemployment, alone or discouraged. Strengthen them in the promise that you are always with them. Help us as we care for each other in ways both big and small. Let everything we do and everything we say remind ourselves and others that we are not in this life alone, but that you are with us, with your love supporting us and your hands guiding us. Remembering all these things, we pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The land is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God's word of healing and love that are challenging us 
to go forth into God's world with the good news of God's abiding presence. Go in peace, and may God's peace be always with you. In the name of God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.